On va commencer si vous voulez. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bonjour. Yeah, sorry. Is it your pen? And the, the other one too, yeah, it's ten the top on two delivery slips because it's still uh, but it's okay, we can do it after. Okay. Bienvenue à tous pour ce premier workshop de l'année 2023 ici à Modular Square. Donc on va vous présenter Genre Analogue qui a fait toute une sorte de, de tout un tas de modules très, très intéressants. Et euh, alors, il parle pas français, donc il va falloir euh, écouter euh, oh, un, peu, un petit peu français. Ça marche peu en, voilà. en anglais. Donc il va vous faire une petite démonstration euh, de ces modules en anglais. Merci. À toi. So, um, hello everybody. Yep, again, uh, I'm gonna do this in English because otherwise we're gonna spend a lot of time here. I think. Uh, so my name is uh, Joran. Um, this is uh, Drenalog OG Design. Um, we make uh, high-end, innovative analog modules in Belgium um, and maybe some of you already know the brands maybe most of you some of you are maybe just exploring um, what I'm going to show today is first of all step 8 which is our latest addition to the series our latest release uh, and that one has been anticipated for a long time it's um, you can use it as an analog sequencer but it's also much more an analog shift register wave shaper and so on so we're going to do a quick exploration of, of what this module can do um, and then I also definitely want to show delay one uh, maybe pivot two as when we have time so delay one is our upcoming um, BBD delay line module as one is a, is a very powerful sound sculpting tool and uh, pivot two is our send and return series parallel router very router um, we also have the rest of the series here, so we have you know, classics, filter 8, generate 3, uh, fold 6, fold 2, one, but also a few other ones. So I'll probably go around all of the series eventually, but you know, we're not a bit a big group, so if you have some questions or you know, or you have some something I'd like to patch up, you know, just let me know and I can do it straight away. It's not this is very much unprepared. Uh, I just wanted to, to drop by and show what we have in a bit of a well, workshop, basically. Yeah. So again, thanks to the Modular Square crew for, for inviting me. It's always great to, uh, to see where, where modules end up. Um, and yeah, I, I just love this, this space you feel great here. So uh, it's great, uh, great to be here. Um, right now, I patch that just a simple little subtractive patch. And you're hearing generate three through filter eight, but turn up some resonance. And what we've got here is 
a, um, a, a little upgraded through step 8. So, step 8, um, the idea behind the module is uh, I realized that if you look at a lot of sequential modules, and with that I mean uh, analog sequencers, sequential switches, analog shift register, everything in that genre, they have quite a bit in common, but there are different variations on, on the same team, uh, on the same you know, idea with slightly different circuitry. And I wanted to create a more general building block where you can actually patch up all of these things from the single module. So how it works is that you have an input and that is sent to eight stages sequentially, like a sequential switch. But each of these stages also have a uh, hold circuit in there. So I can um, v make a quick demonstration, patch it up as a, as a sequencer. So what I now have is 5 volts from the input. If the input is unused, you get a 5 volt normal. And that's being sent to the 8 stages in sequence. And each of these have a different attenuation level for the output. And what you create here are 8 different attenuation levels, 8 different notes if you use them uh, to create an CV melody. Um, but we also have the all modes. And now you'll see that all of the outputs remain all of the output voltage LEDs remain lit. So what happens here is that I've uh, activated the hold circuits on the outputs. And this is a difference you would from or compared to a normal sequential switch where you don't have this hold feature. Now all of these voltages remain stored until the until the register returns to them and refreshes the, the memory following this input which of course can change. I could um, create some random melodies just by patching uh, our chaos oscillator orbit tree into the input. And now it's using this chaotic, not really random, but chaotic oscillations are being used as the input for the register instead of just fixed 5-fold normal. And I could turn up all of the sliders so now there's no attenuation going on. Now you're hearing this chaotic oscillation being sampled on every clock trigger, uh, creating a new note value that's being stored in the register. So here you see the uh, stage is like this. We have two other switches. Those are called cycle shifts or track ensemble. So I'll start with uh, the track ensemble switch. Let's say I turn up this frequency a little bit and I go into tracking mode. And now you should be able to see what happens. Maybe if I slow things down a little bit. And so now every output will actually track the inputs. And you see the, the oscillations change from orbit 3. So the input is being, you know, it, it keeps following the input, whatever is following on the input, and sending it to the output of the active stage. You can also go to sample mode and then just one sample is taken the moment a stage becomes active. A very short fast sample which can even be used at audio frequencies. So step 8 will run up to 20 kilohertz no problem so you can do wave shaping audio rate applications as well. Um, for clock source I'm just using this uh, contour 1 function generator by the way. It's a convenient way to uh, to control step 8. Now we have some extra creative features um, with the uh, pass, reverse and reset inputs for example. A pass is a gate input and that can be used simply uh, I should go here application 
with the pass input I can pass the register but it will still resample the input as it receives uh, step triggers so you can actually separate the sampling from the register control using the pause input we have a reverse as well which is very creative and one patch we like to do is to create a little flip-flop to make the register go back and forth for example using the reverse input or you can do this uh, with some kind of source of uh, some chaotic or random source to create variations where you get this irregular um, reversing action to create some, some interest. And then we also have a reset, which is trigger input that can be used to reset the register. And it can also be used to uh, make the register shorter. So now I've gone from the gate output number 6 to the reset and it will um, limit the width of the register to 5 steps instead of 8. You get these interesting you know, 5 over 4 rhythms for example. Now, we've uh, mostly been using step 8 in cycle mode now and that's switch number 3. That is the most basic or the easiest way to use it. It's like a sequential switch. So the input is sent to the eight stages sequentially. Let's again um, take our random voltage. And let's see. There's a lot of patch cables here. So we go to all mode, we see all of the voltages and you see the register being refreshed from left to right. Now something slightly magical happens when I go into the shift mode. Now we have something unique in Eurorack, it's an 8 stage fully analog shift register. On every step, now each stage will uh, shift its voltage to the one next to it. And yeah, you will, you know, it's... Uh, you can think of this one, one really nice application for this, and we can actually patch it up in a moment, is to create uh, musical canons where um, one voice is playing a melody and the next voice is playing the same melody one note or, or a few notes later, and you get these very interesting like revolving melodies. Um, and also at audio range applications, there's, there's very, you can create very short delays, for example, using this. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And let's see if we can quickly patch up. So also I should mention that we have been using the scan output so far, and that takes um, the active stage in the active stage you can see here on the bottom at the gate outputs there's always one active stage that's the one you know the input is, is connected to um, the scan output takes the analog voltage of the active stage but you also have a separate analog output for every stage so all of these voltage are always available uh, at the same time we can take um, let's see So we can send to, to one oscillator, we can send the output of stage one. And now stage one is being constantly refreshed by every clock trigger because we are in shift mode. We can connect the analog output of stage two to the volt product of a, of a second second voice let's see now we are of course working unquantized and with uh, with something slightly random 
but you should be able to hear that the voltages are being sent to the melody sequentially and maybe we can go like this So the system is very basic, but imagine you have a system and much where you can patch up quickly much more voices. And they can be different voices, like they don't have to be generated on a filter um, pair. They could be totally different voices where each is playing the same melody. Um, but you have this, this shifting going on. Uh, another application we like to use it for, and that uh, leads into the second application actually, is hocketing, where uh, you have one melody, but it's very different voices playing this uh, every note in this one melody. And that's also something Step 8 is very good at, because we have those hold stages. So what you would do for this, is you have a, a, another sequence going into the input, and then each of the stages is being refreshed. So you go back into sequential modes. Each of the stages is being uh, refreshed. So it receives uh, a new note of the sequence, but it also holds the data when it goes to the next stage. So you could actually have release on all of these voices, which uh, with a normal sequential switch would be impossible. And then there's another input, and that's the stage inputs. Uh, and this one is really cool because it can be used for analog control instead of sequential control. So we, we are creating just a simple um, fixed voltage with a select 2 into the stage input. And you will actually see that as I change this voltage, we are scanning through these stages it's following this the CV and you can actually combine this so I can I can demonstrate if I uh, take my clock again from control one uh, so now we are using sequential control but I can still manually shift and both of these can be used at the same time. So you can imagine there's a lot of creative possibilities there as well. Imagine I take um, this, this clock in combination with our uh, orbit one. Maybe make it a little bit faster. up again and so now it's actually stepping through like normally and we are using the output of contour one as the filter envelope so that's the enveloping you're hearing on here but orbit Three is also taking control and what step 8 does is once it detects that this stage CV moves outside the range of the current stage it will uh, reset stage to this new so it will actually jump to this new setting and this can even be used in combination with the reset input uh, where uh, this voltage determines the level to jump to and then the reset inputs actually will make, uh, make the stage, or make the register jump to this stage. Now, I mentioned before that step 8 will also function at, uh, at audio frequencies. And, um, this opens up some very cool possibilities, which I really want to, uh, to show you and, and uh, let you listen to. So, let's take our output and I will take our scan output to the mixer and then let's see if I have a cable available here 
Uh, we take the stage output and we'll take an output of an oscillator, actually. So now this oscillator is scanning through the stages. Um, now, keep in mind that this uh, stage CV range is 0 to 5 volts, so depending on what you're sending in, uh, you may need to attenuate or bias. Uh, that's, that's, of course, normal in, uh, in modular. So we have our uh, CV, our triangle wave from generate 3 going into the stage inputs, and all of the LEDs appear to be lit. What's actually happening is that we are at an audio frequency going through all of these stages. And now there's no output because all of the stages are just 5 volts constantly from the inputs. But I can start to draw waveforms basically. And we have an audio rate wave shape. Now imagine instead of, well, imagine you're going to hear it. If we have, uh, instead of just 5 volts going in, we could have a second oscillator going in. So I plug in the signal cuts, that's because we've disconnected this uh, 5 volt normal. We go to a second oscillator, and now we get some, some interesting sounds. Uh, of course, the, the beating effect will depend on the relative frequencies of these two oscillators. I don't know about you, but I've never made, heard an, an analog sequencer make this sound. So that's a quick, very quick overview of step eight, I have to say. Uh, it's, it's tricky in a workshop situation like this. You can't make very, in very complex patches uh, when you're trying to explain a very multifunctional module quickly. Um, but you'll find also on our website there's some excellent videos like a monotrail maybe you know him he just made a, a great short overview video of step 8 on YouTube that's and of course we have difficult and breeze and so on they actually take the time to make patches that really make the module shine I'm wondering if, if anyone already has some questions about about step 8 I guess not everything was clear <laughs> Um, so next we have delay one. I really want to show you. Um, maybe some of you have already seen the module. Uh, what we try to do with delay one, and I'll quickly patch up something by the way. Um, what we try to do with delay one is to make a module that has um, that has a BBD in there, but not just to have a BBD. Um, the goal was simply to have a high quality analog delay and of course analog because that's all what your analog is about um, and then you find if you want to keep everything in the analog realm that there's really uh, only two ways to do it it's with BBD or it's with tape delay um, we chose delay one because tape delay is very messy of course it's a mechanical thing so if you want to make a solid state I'll put it that way, if you want to make solid state analog delay, then BBD is a technology to use. Uh, it's not uh, known for its fidelity, and that for us was a nice challenge to actually try and make a high fidelity um, delay module. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm.
So that was a very quick demo of, of delay one. Um, what we have in delay one is a BBD that's set up for rather short delay times. The reason is simply that we decided to get the best possible fidelity out of the BBD, and that forces you very quickly into short delay times. So we've decided to um, really gear this towards um, chorus, phaser, um, short echo effects, but also it's a, it's a carpless strong monster. And that's something I really want to, want to demonstrate quickly. Um, and I'll make uh, another little sequence with step eight. So I think all I need to do is to give it a clock again. So the difference between delay one and existing BBD modules is that um, existing BBD modules often play into the expectations uh, users have about BBD delays, which are, let's say, a 50-year-old technology. Um, and, and it's now associated with, you know, it's noisy, it's, it's low bandwidth, it's crunchy. Um, and I really try to, to challenge that idea. With, uh, with delay one. Uh, let's see what's going on here. So I don't know if you're uh, if, if you're all familiar with Carplus Strong. But the idea be behind this is that you have uh, just a simple white noise bursts, what you're hearing now, going through a delay line with a lot of feedback. And what happens is this burst is getting feedback again, 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 again. Uh, with a filter in there usually, or at least uh, not 100% feedback, so you get a natural delay as the amount of feedback uh, attenuates on every iteration of the, of the delay line. So now we're hearing the inbuilt white noise transient generator. Just the trigger going in, the trigger from step eight going in, generating this white noise burst. Now as I turn up the blend control, which is our dry wet, we hear the delay, the delayed version as well. So we hear the white noise two times. Now I will turn up the feedback and we are getting more repetitions and actually we are getting something that starts to resemble uh, a guitar snare, um, a guitar string rather. We can introduce some damping, which is our low pass filter in the feedback loop. And now uh, we get low pass filtering every time the, the signal goes through. So it's like having a uh, it's similar to having a, an, a filter decades or an enveloped filter on the output. And that creates our natural um, reduction of high frequencies. We'll turn up the blend further so we have full white signal. Why delay one works so well for car plus strong is that it has uh, has an integrated volt proctive tracking high frequency clock. So how the BBD works is that you have um, a high frequency signal, square wave driving, or clocking the BBD line, and on a lot of uh, BBD del uh, delays, 
that usually ranges from a few kilohertz to maybe 100 kilohertz. On delay one, we push that all the way up from 20 kilohertz to one megahertz. And that means that you're never gonna hear this clock whine that's so, so much associated with BBDs. You don't need heavy output filtering to get rid of this clock whine. You always have perfect bandwidth up to 20 kilohertz. And no, uh, or very minimal aliasing only at, uh, at uh, uh, longest delay times. And this high frequency oscillator is also temperature compensated and volt productive tracking. So let's go back to, um, to a more simple signal here. A sequencer going into, into generate tree into the filter. And I'll send that to uh, So we can do some more classical BBD sounds. No, actually, I'll uh, turn up this a little bit. Here we have an anti and sum switch, and that uh, controls the polarity of the feedback. So you can have positive or negative feedback, which in this application gives uh, a different sound. We're actually comb filtering here, with the delayed signal being mixed together one on one with the dry signal. And you get some nice tails if you cut the, the input signal as well. Now here we have the damping control, as I mentioned before, and that's our filter. You increase the damping. We'll cut some of the low frequencies. We also have high pass modes. And here you hear some of the dynamic effects in delay one. So delay one has a lot of BBD effects, contains a compander pair, which is a compressor on the input and an expander on the output. And this is important to get the best possible fidelity from the BBD because the, uh, the dynamic range is very small. Now we've leveraged this uh, compander pair to also create a, uh, a, a smooth uh, control between the input signal and the feedback signal. So what it means is that you don't get these sudden bursts of feedback, you know, you, these unexpected explosions of feedback that just drown out your, your dry signal. Yeah. There's always a good ratio between the two. So it's like an automatic gain control for this, for this feedback. And as I increase the amount of damping in high frequency modes, you hear how you're getting more of these high frequencies in there since it's compensating for the loss of the low frequencies in the feedback. And you can get some very nice resonant sounds from it.
fact, we call delay one a uh, split phase bucket brigade delay because we have um, our wet delayed signal and then we have two dry wet uh, mixes. One is uh, with a positive phase of the delay and one is negative. So the delay is actually inverted uh, or subtracted from the input signal. If you send this to a stereo pair, you can get very stupid uncorrelated signals, but they sound very cool. And I don't know if you're getting the stereo effect right here. Uh, I'm actually very far from the sweet spot, but I'm sending the um, uh, one of them, so the, the negative output, we call it, uh, to the left channel and the positive to the right channel, where actually the delayed, is, the, the delayed signal is an anti-phase compared to the wet signal. And of course, all of the parameters are voltage controllable, so not just voltage proctive uh, feedback time control, but also uh, uh, variable time modulation, damping, blend, feedback, everything is voltage controllable. And we even have external clocking. So as I mentioned before, um, the normal clock frequency range is 20 kilohertz to one megahertz but we can introduce an external clock signal. So for people who think 50 milliseconds is not long enough for me, you can actually experiment with sending in your own clock signal, which is, uh, fidelity goes out of the window basically, but there is no upper limit to the delay time. It all depends on what, what you're sending in. So as I plug in a cable into the high frequency inputs, we get no more signal because now our clock is, um, is overridden by this cable and we can get a um, for example from from filter 8 now we have a clock signal from filter 8 and you'll hear a good fidelity at the maximum frequency since filter 8 can go up to 27 kilohertz but as I reduce it you will start to hear aliasing but the delay time increases massively And now the coarse and fine control don't have any effect since we've uh, overruled the internal oscillator. But of course we still have feedback, we still have damping, still can do negative feedback. If you want to make some, some crunchy sounds, filter 8 will do it. Uh, sorry, delay 1 will do it. And this, I think, demonstrates the philosophy of your analog, which is we're going to give you the tools. We're going to make sure that all of the, of the knobs have, have nice ranges for most applications so you can quickly patch up things. But if you want to do some open heart surgery and dive in, you know, if, if you know what you want or you just want to experiment with, with going beyond the, the normal limitations, we give you the options, we give you the tools and you can just go for it. And that is, uh, for me, is, is the essence of modeler and especially analog modeler, is patch programmability and being able to, to patch your dreams, patch up what you want to make. And, you can just start from an empty system, an empty canvas and with some, some modules, with some voltage and create some really cool sounds. So that's uh, an overview of Delay 1 as well. I hope you, you enjoyed that one. I, I really do. I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to getting it out there. Uh, we are aiming around super boot time. Everything unfortunately got a little bit pushed, pushed out because of, of step 8. Um, that uh, you know that took a lot of development time more than we, we anticipate to get it perfect the way we want. So that's why DLA one we um, we had to push out a little bit as well. Um, so are there any questions about DLA one? Um, no, I think uh, I think it was clear. Um, are there any specific modules anyone wants to have a, have a demonstration of or? Uh, Anyone has questions about? Uh, the one you generate the sounds for the second eight first uh, was interesting. Mm -hmm. 
Um, filter 8? Yeah, so I'm using filter 8 here as the clock for, for delay 1. Uh, so filter 8 is normally a filter, and you're actually hearing this filter 8 being used as a filter. And we can add some resonance. feedback on here. So filter 8 is very much designed as a, uh, as a filter, of course, it's in the name. So we have an input and we have eight filter outputs, four kinds of low pass, one through four pull, a high pass, a bond boost notch, uh, a, uh, that's a special one actually where you have first a bond boost and then you have a notch in there. A phaser, a phase shifter, and a four pole bond pass. But this module, and it, it's, I think, for good reason, our most popular module, also demonstrates our philosophy, our design philosophy, very well. That is that you get all of these options. So, for example, you turn up the resonance, you get self oscillation. But the self oscillation is temperature compensated, full productive tracking, wide range, as I saw, up to 27 kilohertz. And down uh, range wise, it can even go super. Cool. So, actually, you have a low switch, which is something you'll find in a lot of our modules, where you have uh, both an audio range and a low frequency range. And then you can go to minutes long. And the oscillations you will see on the output. So, again, we are, we are self oscillating here, and I'll remove the input. Um, all of these are in uh, an eight-phase relationship. So we have 45 degrees of separation between these uh, low distortion, uh, high stability sine waves being generated. So we have an eight-phase LFO suddenly, not just a filter. It even has a hold feature that can be gate controlled and then you can uh, just resume the oscillations, uh, switch or gate controlled. Uh, we have dedicated ping input as well, two inputs that are mixed together, uh, linear frequency modulation with AC coupling as well as exponential. So uh, this is uh, just for me so useful to have and you, you saw like it's, it's there being used as a filter in the patch, but the other one I just used as, a, as an oscillator for, yeah, for delay one. So I'm, I'm happy you asked about it because it's something I was planning to, to show anyway since it's, uh, it's for a lot of people it's actually their first introduction to, to our range and then they start looking at, at the other modules. Um, so if you want to have a try later, I mean, sure, go ahead. I think actually they, they have one uh, here in the system as well. And when is uh, Second 8 out? It's out already? Yes, Step 8 out? was released in December. And uh, actually, on your website, it's it should be uh, Step 8, should be, unless uh, something is wrong with the website. sound and makes someone do this. <laughs> so um, yeah, step eight was released in, uh, in December. Uh, actually, I just brought a box here, so they have them available if you want to go home with one, you, uh, you, you can. This is the place to, to get them. Uh, actually, that's, that's quite true because uh, we, we've been having trouble keeping up with demand for step eight. It's, uh, it's a module where people are, are discovering the possibilities with it and they are seeing like, yeah, there's a place in my system for this, um, which is really, I'm, I'm very happy to see that because it's, it's, it's an idea of, of a few years ago and you're always curious, like, are people going to understand what I'm trying to, to show them here? Like, not just a module that does this one thing, but it's, it, it opens up so many possibilities, and that's actually true for, for a lot of our modules. Um, it's just this, this 
joy of, of having a tool available, especially if you take a little bit of time to get to know it. Um, it's yeah, just, just so nice to have these tools available where you know, OK, I can do this now, I can do this now. I don't need some very, very special dedicated module. It's, it's right here. The, the option is there. And then you can do subtractive synthesis, but you can go beyond. You can do additive synthesis. You can do car plus strong. You, you can invent your own type of synthesis or do something in between. There's so many possibilities. And that's also the goal of your analog is to show people that you don't need to go digital to innovate. There's actually a lot of unexplored analog territory. And there's a lot of strengths in analog, like, for example, the high speed operation in step eight as possible because there's there's no microcontroller in in there or in anything it's you know everything is analog or it's it's discrete logic no code no software it just works and it does it really really fast and that's for me i just i just love the the work we're doing and and i hope you you do as well did that answer your question i went on on a on a tangent <laughs> Does anyone else have uh, a question or uh, okay? Great. Well, thanks for for your attention and uh, I, if uh, if anyone wants to have a try with the system, just please be my guest. You're more than welcome. Uh, it's here um, and it's got some. Some cool bits. Actually, this delay one, it's uh, and, and pivot two. By the way, there's only two of these in existence right now. So there, yes, there's there's two fully finished prototypes. Um, but there will be be more coming, and we really hope to to get them out as soon as possible. So because there's always uh, we have a small panel of testers we're working with, um, and they bring us ideas, and there's you know some feedback loop going on. But once they actually go out in the wide world, we're seeing that people are doing things with them that we didn't anticipate. And the same is starting to happen with Step 8, that people have you know, tried the patches in the, in the videos, tried the patches in the user manual, and then they start doing, uh, doing different things. And uh, it's, it's always really cool to see. OK. Well, thank you all very much for, for coming by. I hope you, you enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you.